This video is sponsored by 1Password. Is the Samsung Galaxy Flip 3 better than an iPhone? Today we're going to find out because, well, my iPhone actually broke and I don't actually know when I'm going to get it back. So uh, I've been using this Flip 3 for a few weeks now and I have some thoughts about this fantastic flippy foldable phone thing. So uh, let's talk about it. Firstly, this isn't the first Android phone that I've tried switching to, but each time I just find myself being lured back into that shiny Apple ecosystem for some reason or another. <laughs> Now links will be in the description for anything mentioned down below and I hugely appreciate those of you who do use that as that does help support this channel so thank you. And first let me tell you about all the really really good stuff about this phone and Android in general. Now the Flip 3 is actually a really really good phone. If you are subscribed to me already then you'll probably know that I didn't really get on that well with the bigger fold version of this phone for a number of reasons but this size and form factor it just fits so nicely in your pocket even if you have really small pockets and it also fits nicely in your hand when folded it also has an actual useful front touch screen that can be used to scroll through like notifications and see if something's actually worthy of you actually you know opening the phone up and because this is folded it means you can actually use what would be the rear facing cameras to take high quality selfies or videos without holding up a huge phone though the camera isn't as good as maybe the iphone or androids like the pixel for the flipping action it's kind of easy to open up one handed you just kind of jam your finger into the gap and push it open. I think you might struggle if you have long nails because technically you're actually using the nails to push the screen up and open the phone, but otherwise it's a pretty nice feeling and you get a nice snap when you close it up. Now, what I am impressed with, kind of release my inner geek here, is the hinge because somehow Samsung have crafted a phone with a hinge that doesn't pinch when you open it up. It's actually quite something like, even if you tried, it still doesn't pinch your finger. I know, kind of geeky, I know, but Still impressive. And once the phone is opened up, what about that fold? Well, whilst you can't physically see it in images and you can feel it when you run your finger over it, it's not actually that noticeable. When you're looking directly at the phone, the fold disappears. When watching video content, you just wouldn't be able to tell that it was just a single sheet of glass. And it's just not a thing. Honestly, just don't worry about it. Now it does also come with what looks like a screen protector attached, but Samsung recommends you don't pull it off. And after seeing the videos from like, the, I think it was the first generation where people were basically peeling the display off the phone, I think I'll leave it right there, okay? But enough about the foldy thing. What about Android? For those of you interested in the whole like iPhone to Android thing, well, Android as a whole is actually kind of cool, though it does have its issues, which we'll get to. Everything, absolutely everything is customizable. And if there's not a setting built into the phone to do something, then there's probably an app you can download that will let you do it. Like anything from custom themes to a huge range of customizable widgets to being able to entirely replace the launcher, which is kind of like the home screen. Nova Launcher has been my go-to recently as it lets you just really decluster your home screen by you know, only showing the essential apps. And then you can also do commands like swiping up or swiping down on apps to launch other apps. I mean, those kind of features you just don't get over in the iPhone world. Also, in terms of customization, the ability to unlock the phone and have it go straight to the home page without having to like swipe up is another really, really valuable thing. I mean, the amount of time wasted on my iPhone having to constantly like swipe up and it makes you like really wonder how many hours of someone's life is spent just swiping up on like things. Multitasking. Multitasking is incredibly useful and something I also fairly regularly use. It means you can have, say, a video playing whilst replying to DMs on Twitter. Now, follow me on there if you haven't already. Or perhaps you could be checking out your calendar whilst writing an email. There are just so many possibilities that you just don't get on iPhone right now. But what about the biggest issue that many and most iPhone users say is their biggest issue with switching? which is iMessage and I guess that whole Apple ecosystem thing. Well, I have two thoughts here. Now, firstly, I've just subscribed to a relatively new app called Beeper, which was started by the guy who designed the first real smartwatch, the Pebble smartwatch, remember those? And I do have a video around this, which I'll post, which I'll link up to here and in the description down below. But Beeper allows you to link all of your messages services together in one single app. Now, this means regardless of where it's coming from, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even Slack, and yes, even iMessage, it comes through on Beeper. And I can reply back to those messages within Beeper. So yes, I can send iMessages from my Android phone, like nuts as that might sound. But the second thought I had here, and it's only really come from trying to switch to Android like multiple times, I don't use iMessage as much as I thought I did. Now with using Beeper, I can see who I've been messaging and on what service. And it's basically all my family that's on iMessage still, and 
that's about it really. For those of you using AirDrop, just use SnapDrop instead and now you basically have AirDrop on well, any device and that works really well and it even looks the same as AirDrop. For photos, I've been using Google Photos already in addition to Apple's iCloud photo service so there's no issues there with getting to you know, my photos from any device and it even works a little better on here than on iPhone because when you attach a photo to you know say a social media app you can choose which folder on your phone or which app the photo is saved in rather than first having to go into you know the said app save it locally and then upload it like you do on iPhone. Now I am still yet to find the seamless like copy and paste replacement which I do use all the time on my iPhone so maybe comment down below for anyone who knows you know a fix for that one and for those of you who like your watch to unlock your phone for you you can kind of work around this issue with Android for example you can set the phone to unlock when it's connected to certain Bluetooth devices so say when you're in your car or when your watch is nearby then it can stay unlocked. Not anywhere near as secure as Apple's implementation, but it is quite nice to have the ability if you wanted to, say, always keep it unlocked whilst you're at specific locations or in your car. Really neat. And another news, it is really, really awesome to be able to have your phone screen left on all the time and at a glance, be able to see kind of what the time is or which apps have notifications because of that always on display that most Androids seem to have. It's, now it is fairly limited in terms of customization, but it is, oh, Oh, so useful. Also other seemingly minor things now that are still worth a mention is the 120 Hertz display, which makes things look really, really smooth. Something that is of course coming to the iPhone 13. So yay for that one. The speakers are also incredibly loud. I think one of the loudest I've actually heard in a phone before. So good for that. Battery life is also pretty good. Certainly a lot better than the Fold 3, though I still haven't found a phone that matches, you know, or beats my iPhone 11 Pro Max battery life, but that is a gigantic phone, but it is not far off. And you can also improve it further by disabling that 120 Hertz. 5G and that always on display if you really, really wanted to like get more out of your day. I've actually found out that by turning off 5G saves an awful lot of battery life. And then notifications. One of the best and kind of worst things about Android, I'll get to that more in a second, but with notifications, I love absolutely love how you can customize pretty much everything like even which types of notifications each app sends so you're not constantly getting spammed all day now something that's helped me counteract one of these like bad things about notifications is to set a custom ringtone on each different app so when something happens on maybe twitter it tweets on beeper it makes a different sound and you know so forth so i can quickly tell what's coming through the phone by like the sound that it makes because onto the negatives notifications just don't work properly. And when I say they don't work properly, I mean they don't do what they say it does on the box. If I have my phone out in my hand doing something, it will make a noise, but nothing shows up on screen to tell me what's happened. I mean, yes, I do get you know a tiny little icon in the top left, but Android says and shows me that it should show me a preview of what you know that thing was. Kind of like a message, for example. I wanna know who's messaged me so I know if I wanna reply like right away or whether it can wait. But instead, you have to go into the actual app to find out what's going on, or you have to pull down from the top to notifications. I feel like a dumbass now. So, for those of you that are experiencing the issue of things not popping up when notifications are coming through, it's because for some reason in Android, the show as pop-up kind of checkbox is disabled in most of the apps, apart from like the default kind of system apps. So do make sure you're going into notifications, tapping on default notifications, and then turning or ticking the show as pop-up box because then all of your notification problems will go away. Back to your normal scheduled programming stuff. And a few things specific now to the design. Firstly, when wireless charging doesn't always work on certain chargers because the charger is actually built into the bottom part of the phone rather than most phones have them in the middle. So if you have those pretty like standard stand-up desk mounts that I actually do use, well, it might not work. If you have a Tesla and the wireless charging pads, it definitely doesn't work. Secondly, FSS, fluffy screen syndrome. This phone is great. The foldable screen is great and you don't notice that fold when using it, but the fluff that accumulates on the screen, I definitely did notice. Hopefully that's something they can improve over the years as the materials you know, they use get better, but it does seem that this screen attracts dust and fluff. And then thirdly, the fingerprint reader. Now I am getting to understand that with Android, face ID is like less of a thing as everyone, at least everyone tells me in the comments, everyone on Android uses and prefers the fingerprint reader because it's fast and reliable. Though face ID is fast and reliable as well, but hey ho. Now you can still unlock with your face on Android, but it's not as reliable or as secure as Apple. Even Samsung themselves have an article on the website which says not to use face recognition for any like high security applications. Now, anyway, I found the fingerprint reader too high to easily use in one fluid kind of open motion. Ideally, it would be kind of where the hinge is, but which isn't of course possible, I guess, yet. But for now, you need to flip the phone open and then adjust your grip to reach the sensor. And that also means the volume buttons up here are just really quite high up because it is generally 
quite a tall phone. Now this is actually one phone that I think I would switch to if the new iPhone announcement wasn't happening in literally a few hours after shooting this video. And with Google Pixel 6 just weeks away now, September is gonna be a really interesting month for my whole kind of Apple Android switching conundrum. So consider subscribing if you want more of that. To learn more about sending iMessages using Beeper, then click here. Or for my slightly more negative review on the Fold 3, click this one. My name is Pete, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.